heard we're giving you the day off tomorrow. Yeah. How about that? Uh, yeah. We'll be out here if y'all want to come. Just resting some injuries. <laughs> Sewing <laughs> no some bruises. Question. No question. Um, just one, one announcement that, that I, I should have made yesterday, but uh, JT Daniels had uh, his surgery, went extremely well, extremely well. He's now back on campus and starting the rehab process, but really happy for him. Uh, it went very, very smoothly. So uh, with that, I'll take any questions that you got. Have you even thought about a timeline for him? Does it camp next year and stuff? Yeah, you know, usually those things are 9 to 12 months. Um, and, that, and now with a quarterback, a little bit different process because you can throw, start throwing skills. So I, I can imagine him in spring having the opportunity not to be in live team periods, mm -hmm. but uh, have the availability to throw scale routes on errors one-on-ones uh, and be able to do that as long as he's medically cleared. So he'll be right up on that point about nine months, and that's usually when people can start moving pro uh, moving forward. Uh, but uh, really proud for him. Uh, and have a chance to visit with him, and he's, he's doing wonderfully. I would imagine he's determined to get back in by training camp. Yeah, you know, no question. I, you know, he's already, I talked to him the, the day, I mean, literally right after the surgery, and he was already in the machine that bends your knee back and forth going 100 miles an hour. He said, Coach, I'm already 15 degrees ahead of schedule right now. So uh, so he, he'll be one, uh, just knowing him, that uh, he'll be working daylight till dark, dawn to get it done. If you have all three corners healthy, how do you envision rotating them? Because it was OG and the other two kind of competing initially, now they're all. Yeah, you know, we did, we did that in the first couple of games, if you noticed. We, we played all three of those guys, and that's the beauty of, of the what Craig does. They play both right and left, uh, and they can roll. So it's great to have those, to have three young guys, not have to go 80 plays uh, a game, and be able to split up those numbers. Those three can rotate in. It helps us, and you get three really good players. So uh, to keep them fresh, keep them healthy, uh, it's going to be nice. After 19 penalties the past two games, is that becoming a concern for you again? Or? No, you know what well, we were really uh, we were really good going in going into the Utah game, and uh, that was one of those strange games where Utah has 16 penalties and we have 12. Um, and then last game we had eight, and and Washington has seven. Um, you know, so uh, it's one of those games where it was a, a closely officiated games, and that will happen. Um, <clears throat> the thing that I'm looking at right now, uh, for and addressed with the team is, you know, some of the decision making penalties that, that are critical. You know, a celebration penalty that, you know, when you look at it and you watch it on film, it's not very much. But you know what? If they're calling it close to the vest, you have to make the right decision. Um, a celebration right after we had a player just literally step one yard into the green. Very, very close. They were calling it close to the vest. That day you have to know that. And um, so we, we've addressed that. What I've really liked is the thing that I was hoping for is a lot of the fundamental penalties aren't showing up. You're not seeing a lot of holding calls right now or a lot of handsy calls. Um, and, and that's a good thing. So um, the, all the work that we did in camp fundamentally to, to teach hand placement, to have your feet in the correct place, to have hat placement in the correct place, is paying off for us in, in that area. But I would like to see those numbers uh, go down uh, like it was the first three games. What did you see from Max Williams in his first collegiate appearance? Uh, you know, we've always known that Max is a very football instinctive kid. Uh, he, he's in that uh, a Jane A. Harris, Nikel Roby, that type of player that just is so football instinctive. Uh, and plays even faster than he is, um, he, you know, and it showed up. It showed up even on the fumble that he caused down in the red zone that could have been a huge play if, if we had uh, been able to recover the ball. Um, but to, to get him out there and to get 20 plus snaps, man, what a, what a great opportunity for him uh, to develop um, because he's gonna be a special player for us. He's one of those guys that can play corner or nickel at any time, so there's a value in that. Did what he show you earn him maybe a larger share of that, that job? I know he's playing because Greg was benched, but mm -hmm. he saw what he yeah, could do. Yeah, you know, Greg's playing great ball. You know, Greg's played all, all year great ball, but what it does is it provides us some depth. You know, we, we've had to double train Chase at both mm -hmm. safety and and at nickel. And now, you know, having Max uh, being able to be at that spot, it can allow Chase and C.J. Paul to really concentrate on the safety position, allow Max to concentrate on that nickel, be an emergency corner if needed. So it, it'll give us some opportunity to really dial in on one position. Looked like Keegan had shells on. Anything mm -hmm. new with him? Uh, no, same same thing. Okay. He's uh, he's um, uh, being able to practice without contact. Uh, so obviously, just in drills at uh, no live period. Uh, he's just pitching and catching right now. Having looked at the, the tape, do you see more opportunities for you guys to run in the future against those five man fronts? Or 
Yeah, you know, 212 yards on the day uh, is a good day uh, in this offense, and and hopefully that will stay consistent. If, if they do, if we do play five-man front set or, or really playing advantage coverages, um, those have to hit and they have to be explosive. That was the one thing that really showed up in that game that I was hoping for, and we we talked about going in is, hey guys, when they're when they're playing drop coverages, they're playing high safeties. You're going to have to throw short and run long, or we're going to have to have explosive runs. And all three backs had explosive runs in the game, which was great to see. And you have 212 yards rushing. Every every kid was, I think, the lowest average was the Vi at 4.9. Everybody else was, you know, six, nine yard average on the day. That's a good day of running the ball, um, and we need that if, if we continue to see it. What do you do with your, what do you do with your bye weekend? Um, going recruiting, uh, so we'll we'll practice tomorrow. Uh, we'll practice tomorrow. Uh, then Friday morning, the kids are in for strength and strength and conditioning, uh, and uh, we'll be out uh, on the road recruiting uh, Friday, um, and then have the chance to you know be able to catch up a little bit Saturday and Sunday and get some advance on on Notre Dame. Uh, but uh, I look forward to have dinner with my wife maybe Saturday night. That'll be fun. That's it's been a while for that, so I, I look forward to uh, having a date with her maybe. All righty. Thank you. Thanks, Clay. Thanks, Clay.